ask you a question? Yeah? When this channeling goes on, uh, how do you receive it? Do you hear it or do you uh, feel it? Or are they controlling your, your uh, vocal cords? Or, or how does it work? Marionettes. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, yes, I feel it. I'm in control of my um, words. Um, I don't hear a voice. That's more with astral, like people who passed on or something, you can recognize their voice. But with ET, it's more like just consciousness and a full concept. I sometimes um, joke to my clients that it feels a little bit like a slow juicer, although by now it's maybe a fast juicer. <laughs> it's like a concept, like an apple comes in and then all of a sudden they change gears and they make it like a pear or a carrot. <laughs> and I just... Um, pick as rapidly as I can because I get a kick out of keeping up with them. <laughs> That's my passion in this work. Uh, I pick as rapidly as I can the words that fit the concept. And if it doesn't really fit it, they kind of like stir it another way and they nudge me, now this way, now this way. So I get like very rapidly green lights, red light, green light, red light. Yes, you're going the right direction, now more this, more like that. It's like being on a roller coaster. I kind of for I forget the room, I forget the amount of people, I forget everything. I'm only focused on translating. And it's really uh, fun. Because <laughs> I love their energy, because it's so zero doubt. And um, yeah, it's like I'm in a shower of light and I'm really enjoying that. And then I come back and for a moment I even see things as a blur and I have to refocus. I it takes me like three minutes to get myself back into this mode. Um, yeah, but I've been doing it for a few years now and I'm really still in love with it. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that answer it a little oh bit? Oh yes, thanks. Okay. And thank you so much for sharing it. Uh, oh, thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's really mm. my passion. <laughs> I would I would also like to ask a technical question. I don't know why if you have got it from other other you can't answer it, but uh, have you got similar questions from from other audiences? Uh, this uh, Arjun has he any knowledge? Seems to have a lot, but of technical things like the physical reality. That's a big problem. Is how to tap into the to the to the what you call the physical vacuum. Of, of physical reality, there's a, there's a big amount of energy in the physical vacuum. How, how could we in humans be able to touch uh, or to tap into that? Are you talking about free energy? Yes, you could, that's, a, that's a popular... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a popular... Uh, uh, yeah. There has been questions like that. So kind of how they train me to do this. So English is my second language. Yeah. I'm Dutch, uh, originally raised Dutch. So how they uh, nudge me to do that, like to bring books and people and words on my way. So I read a lot in English too, to expand my dictionary so that I um, am an easier vessel to translate and answer questions of that nature, which are more technical. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm in a constant process of expanding my vocabulary in that way. Uh, quantum physics, string theory, all this kind of stuff, and they're diving deeper and deeper, the more ready I am to allow that through. If they can't translate it that specifically, they will give uh, usually a metaphor, which brings it to more like child explanation level. But yeah, we have had questions on free energy and um, other uh, things. And I'm just saying we because I'm feeling like I'm in their group or something when I talk hey. for them. Yeah, of course you have to. But yes, sometimes I'm surprised by it and I have to re-listen to the recording because I didn't get, actually, did I get the green lights, yes, this is it, and then by the end I'm like, I don't even really know what was explained just now, so no, I have no, to re-listen to it. Yeah? Yeah. But it's an evolving process, of course. Yeah, yeah I know, it's hard for you because you have to s you have to understand a little bit yourself yeah, you uh, need to, to yes, translate that's it correct. Into, the, into, the, into the terms that that's correct. fits into the, the let's, let's say, the, yeah. the conversa convert this kind of vacuum energy is it's huge and enormous uh, in every zero point source. energy yes yeah, that's, okay, that's it, popular yeah. word but yeah uh. yeah that's true yeah, <coughs> if a word if i don't know a word it won't translate to them no. so then we together have to ask what does it mean it actually happened somewhere in the beginning here yeah does it answer it? yeah okay yeah it makes a lot of sense to me that this is an evolutionary process that goes together with you but i'm curious how did it start 
for you? Ooh, wow. Okay, the super short version, uh, those typical abduction experiences that you hear from, mostly from the United States. So I had them since I was a child. Uh -huh. I was raised um, a Christian, uh, so it didn't have a space. So I kept a lot of this to myself. Uh, and I had a lot of out-of-body experiences because of this, a very conscious recognition of the experiences. And there was a lot of fear, I won't lie about that. Um, at some point, I didn't really understand how to function in this reality so anymore. So at age 23, I actually sought help from a psychotherapist. The idea of abduction stories isn't spoken about much in my culture, and definitely not then. Um, and the beautiful, I think, co-creation on higher level was that he was an ex-hypnotherapist, so this guy understood where I was coming from. So that was such a blessing. And he helped me face my fears and uh, transform them in actually so little sessions that I'm like, whoa, I wish I had it like earlier, but it, of course it's perfect. And a half year after uh, being able to transform that and the resistance to being here and feeling all over the place, I felt much more grounded. And then I saw my first UFO encounter real close up. And that's where everything started to come together and to click in. Uh, and I still couldn't really believe it. Like my rational mind was, um, <laughs> not so sure about it, uh, but what this encounter left me with mainly was uh, a very deep yearning to meditate. And I actually, the next year after this encounter, I traveled to Asia by myself and I went to a monastery in Thailand. I really studied Buddhism, I really started to work on myself and I understood this is really important, I just didn't know why. And that's the journey I took for about 10 years. And then I felt them coming closer energetically, but I still felt, you know, they're like guardian angels or I know they're ETs, but they're, you know, everybody I, in my op opinion by then on was like most people have ET counter connections. So I'm very aware of mine. Who cares? <laughs> A little bit like keeping it random and still to myself. But at some point, because of all the meditation techniques, uh, I didn't even realize, but I had become such an open um, receiver um, that, well, it's a long story, but to make it short, uh, <laughs> like a wake-up call, slap in the face kind of adventure, uh, I suddenly realized uh, you could actually share this. And that was mind-shattering for me. And, I, and that's where my journey began of, you know what, let's try and see what happens. But it included telling my family, my friends, coming out on Facebook, YouTube, all of this. And I just did it full Monty, like taking steps that I was terrified to take, but I took them. And now I'm here and I'm still overcoming fears. Like I was terrified of speaking for groups, for instance. <laughs> I'm actually happy that my eyes are closed most of the time. <laughs> that somebody else in a sense is doing the talking and I'm just directing some audio. But uh, yeah, I'm still learning on this journey, and but it began it began at age three, yeah, for so me. So the abduction, in a sense, is a blessing. Yeah, totally. I'm in very grateful. Uh, all the fears that I had then and terror, whatever. Right now, I'm like, wow, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, I. Um, wanted to ask uh, previously about uh, in many different traditions that we have forgotten now, they make offerings, but uh, have you noticed uh, in the way in contacting that uh, they appreciate something more than other things like uh, special metals or Coca-Cola or... <laughs> 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 oh my god, I love that question. Um, um, uh, I think when, uh, yeah, it's going to sound a little bit like repetitive maybe, but I think when, when we empower ourselves, when we stand in our love and excitement, that's our offering mm -hmm. to them and us. Mm -hmm. And there's no bigger thing. Yeah. They don't expect anything specific from us, not from us to do a specific job or that it's not at all like we are trained life should work. You need to do this because you studied it or your father was it, whatever. It's actually to break free from the boundaries of our limitations that we rise to their level of um, inner knowing. Yeah, 
So I wouldn't, I would never want to limit it to Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that okay? Uh, you mentioned you had out-of-body experiences. Yeah. Uh, did they come spontaneously or did you control them by your will? No, this is funny because I, am, uh, I want to uh, learn how to control them. <laughs> but it happened spontaneously for me my whole life and still does. So I found this guy, William Bullman, online. Nice name if you're into out-of-body experiences. Who actually gives classes on how to direct it. What is and the I'm name? William Bullman. 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 Yeah, he, he's uh, from the United States and he uh, gives classes and he wrote some really nice, interesting books on the subject, <coughs> astral travel or uh, body experiences. So I'm uh, studying how to get more grip on it <laughs> because one reason, it, it, it's working, his techniques are working with baby steps for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, my agreement apparently was for this to happen spontaneously and to overcome whatever fears come up with that because as beautiful as it sounds this is one high road of uh, overcoming fears out of body experiences that's why i went to a psycho psychiatrist eventually because it happened so often i didn't know who i was anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> i see uh, have you to by your uh, intention or uh, your will uh, contacted uh, the it's ets sometime well, they came closer and closer. I observed that at some point in my journey. Yes. I knew they were there. They waited for me to initiate contact. Mm -hmm. So for this, what we're doing right now, and that was the wake-up call, actually, I was almost kind of like trying to meditate and getting all these spontaneous ticks and twists and stuff happening, like crazy. Uh, I thought it was maybe Kundalini, and I, know I knew they were around, and I was kind of like wanting to tell them to go away. But opening the dialogue uh, gave very immediate responses and I was like, wow, this is not happening. And that's when I realized uh, actually we can speak directly and have very fast communication. But I still had to figure out it's not just for me, you could do it for others. When you have these uh, out of body experiences, did you have... Uh, He's like choked. <laughs> <laughs> did you have uh, more, more contact with them? That, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes they're right there. Mm. Yeah, and I also, very little because I don't feel I need it so much, but I did some experiments with DMT and stuff, mm -hmm. immediately, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. I can't, like, I sometimes joke, I like it, so I'm not uh, against it. Now I can't meditate anymore without them, like, they're always immediately there, so when I tune in, they're there. If just to sit with me, you know, there doesn't have to be interaction. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny to know that's really how close they are. That's, I think, really what they also wanted to share with us in the end, mm -hmm. which was fire. <laughs> For me, I got really warm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, where does all... Somebody have more water? I'm like, really? I don't know. <laughs> it's, two minutes to eight. it's two minutes to eight. I'm just passing it on. If you need to go, <laughs> you are free to go, of course. <laughs> I can do like uh, five more minutes of questions. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. If you have one. Yeah, um, wh <coughs> where does all the information come from? From all that is. Okay. Is what they tell me. There's no one specific database, it's everywhere. But you have it in you, actually. Okay, so later maybe we can uh, access all the information? Now we can. Now. We just don't okay. know. We just don't believe we can, and that's why we don't. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, nice. Practical question: Is recording will it be available for us? Somewhere? So I want to. I would like to share some of this at least uh, on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, when I do, perhaps. Ah, yeah. So okay. So <laughs> if you want to find me online, uh, uh, I do this work under the name of Design for Awareness. The four is the number four. So designforawareness.com is my website. Design for Awareness is also a YouTube channel, uh, and it is a Facebook page. So if it is shared on YouTube, I will announce it on Facebook. You can also follow the YouTube channel, and you will get an update. How quick about, do you think? How well, quick? <laughs> well, or, or about la la? Well, it doesn't matter in one year, but what about? So we definitely, can get a time frame. definitely within a year. Definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> within six months. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll uh, it, I will have to. Some months. Okay. Yeah, Good I'm going to try my very best. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you done any uh, work on yourself that has assisted in channeling? Ongoing. 
I mean, stuff that would be like other than meditation or yeah. sitting in the power or lots of stuff like literally it's an ongoing journey and whatever calls me from what I feel it might deepen my process I go in that direction it's constant but I love it so it's not uh, like it doesn't feel like work or something mm. but like I said like of course okay so monastery is kind of meditation but types of yoga um, certain uh, plant medicine, uh, but very little because I really don't need so much. <laughs> um, visualizations, Arjuna's guided me with particular practices. Uh, and I know they are very excited about sharing more of those. So I'm also wanting to do workshops in that and share what I have learned with people, like exercises so that you can tune into multidimensional uh, aspects of yourself easily and ease into that. Because my road was very um, bumpy with these spontaneous OBEs and stuff, but there are ways to gradually train yourself into more awareness of that, which is really nice. And I'm also training that, like I said, and they're training me in it. And yeah, but it's a constant journey and fun. And diet uh, changes in my diet. Um, yeah. I think when you mention anything about the diet, I guess there. It's personal though, yeah. I, you, I cannot possibly say this will work for everybody because we're all unique. You're different biochemistry than I am, so for you, other changes may be required. So I'm very intuitive on it and I basically stopped eating what no longer called me. So at some point, I was already a vegetarian since I was a child, the only one in my family, but this is a trace of the abductions. So I realized that eating meat wasn't gonna work for me. But I got that from the abduction experiences. It may not be everybody's path. But I was an early vegetarian. That's just how it went. And then now I'm basically vegan, except for eggs at the moment. And I kind of move in and out of things. Like, I'm allowed to eat, even start eating meat if I want to. I'm allowed to eat dairy or whatever. I don't limit myself in anything. I'm just consciously, uh, constantly getting to know my body better and better, getting to know myself better, so that I can feel through energy frequency what foods resonate with me and which don't. Mm -hmm. So sugar fell off, caffeine fell off, alcohol is a definite no-go. But these are things that literally uh, bring me to a state where I don't want to be, where I'm not happy. So, and it wasn't all at once, it's little steps. And I'm just following that. And it's not that I'm uh, wanting to be breatharian or something at all, because I love food. <laughs> But um, if that is eventually where I end up, then by then I will probably be enthusiastic about it. I'm just no longer rigiding uh, where it should go because I already learned that doesn't work. Mm. No. So, but it's very fluid. And I can only recommend people to get to know yourself so much that you realize what's working and what's not working for you. But there's a lot of stuff in this society <laughs> that is so... Uh, not most beneficial, I do realize that, in our foods, if you look at standard supermarket food. Yeah. Yeah, last one. <laughs> um, I, wonder, I wonder if you can say something about how to overcome fear, because I have experience when I'm meditating in a group, mm -hmm. I don't feel my body, I get so panic, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I can't feel and I can't move like I'm like buried alive yeah. sometimes. That's a typical um, first phase out of body experience in a sense. Uh, because I also try once to lay in like this, um, and I have this bed with, um, with crystals. With what? With crystals. Okay. Crystal healing. And I tried, okay, my fear, I have to overcome it and do it often. Yeah. So I said, okay, I have faith, just get, get the rhythm and do it uh, like come on with it yeah and it's uh, like uh, the legs uh, were no 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 yeah and sonic and i felt like like yeah. like a machine yes yeah and i was lying there i couldn't move and i thought okay this is healing this is healing this is healing okay i told myself and you were not afraid healing. And and I said, okay, I'm I can move my face, I can breathe. So okay, this is fine, this is fine. <laughs> Telling myself, don't panic. Yeah. And I was lying like one hour or half an hour, 
And the guy who has this crystal body said, oh, this is a very long time, had you on okay? <laughs> and afterwards I felt nothing special at all. I was just proud that, okay, I overcome some of my fear. Sounds like you did it already. Uh, but I think uh, I just wanted to ask you how you, like, if you have anything, like you say something or just do it often or like something you want to tell about. Well, fear. as you practice this more often, you will get more familiar with these states. So the buzz, which became like a pumping in your head, it's a very familiar thing. It's like uh, you, you become aware of your signature frequency and it travels to the part of your body where you're most focused in that moment. So you kind of like, you stayed in your head and you wanted to still mentally control what was going on, which is why you tell yourself, uh, <coughs> I'm okay, or I can move my face, or I can breathe. But you are okay with the rest of your body kind of zo zoning out to a different dimension. So you're becoming multidimensional, you're no longer focused there in the physical. It feels numb, it feels gone. Uh, if you're okay with that, and you, yeah, that's the way to go, to just train yourself. <coughs> it's okay, I'm still here. I am bigger than the body. It, I'm not depending on the body to have sensations for me to exist at all. You will continue to exist, you're an infinite being. So it's, you have to like, you're already doing a great job. Um, the way you're telling it to me but if this is what you want to practice um, it's a beautiful way of traveling naturally on DMT uh, I would recommend again those books of William Bullman because the, the steps that you're describing and I know them from my own uh, experiences it's very recognizable yeah play with it and uh, you're already doing a great job I think but it's always going to be an individual story because for one person they stay in their head, others stay in one foot, <laughs> or you're standing next to your bed and you don't know how to, yeah, it's just um, all individual journeys, everybody's journey is unique in this, but it sounds like you're doing amazing, don't rush it, no. it's the only thing I could say, because there is no deadline, <laughs> mm. okay. yeah, mm. okay. <laughs>